An Introduction to the Devout Life by St. Francis de Sales Book 4 Part 4 Containing Some Needful Remedies Against Ordinary Temptations Chapter 1 That We Must Not Give Heed to What Will the World Say? Directly that the men of the world perceive that you seek the devout life, they will launch forth all their raillery and slander against you. The most ill-natured will pronounce your altered ways to be hypocrisy, affectation, or bigotry. They will assert that the world having slighted you, rejected by it you turn to God. And your friends will overwhelm you with a torrent of what they hold to be prudent and charitable remonstrances. They will tell you that you will grow morbid and melancholy, that you will lose your position in the world, will be considered insupportable, will become old before your time, that your domestic affairs will suffer, that in the world we must do as the world does, that we can surely be saved without such extravagancies and as thousand similar commonplaces. But all this is foolish, idle gossip, and those who talk thus do not really care either for your health or your fortunes. If you were of the world, said our Savior, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore the world hateth you. We have often seen both men and women pass the whole night, or even several nights running, at cards or chess. What devotion can be more wearying, more sad and melancholy than that? Yet no one has a word to say against it, and their friends are not disturbed. But if we devote an hour to meditation, or rise earlier than usual to prepare for Holy Communion, Straightway everybody cries out for the doctor to cure us of the jaundice or of hypochondriacism. We may spend thirty nights in dancing and no one will object. But if we do but keep awake on Christmas Eve, there is a great outcry the day following. Who cannot perceive that the world is an unjust judge, partial and indulgent, toward its own children, but harsh and rigorous toward the children of God. We can never stand well with the world, except by coming to an open breach with it. To satisfy it is impossible. It is too exacting. John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, says our Lord, and you say he hath a devil. The Son of Man is come eating and drinking, and you say, Behold, a glutton and a drinker of wine, a friend of publicans and sinners. So it is. If out of compliance we yield and laugh, play, and dance with the world, it will be scandalized. And if we do not, it will accuse us of hypocrisy and gloom. If we wear fine clothes, it will impute to us some secret design, and if we are ill-dressed, it will call us mean. It will call our gaiety dissolute, and our mortification gloomy. And thus, ever beholding us with an evil eye, nothing we can do will please it. It will exaggerate our failings and publish our faults. Our venial sins will be construed into mortal sins, sins of weakness into sins of intention, and while, as St. Paul says, charity is kind, the world is ill-natured. Charity thinks no evil, but the world always thinks evil. And if the world cannot find fault with our actions, it will attack our motives. Whether the sheep be black or white, have horns or have none, the wolf will devour them all the same, if he can. Whatever we do, the world will find fault. 
If we spend a long time at confession, it will ask, What can we have to say? If we take but a short time, it will say that we do not tell everything. It will spy out all that we do, and from one little hasty word, it will pronounce our temper unbearable. It will denounce our prudence as avarice, our gentleness as folly. But as to the children of the world, their passions will count as the fruit of a generous spirit, their avarice as forethought, their lusts as honorable. Spiders invariably spoil the bee's labor. Never heed this blind world, then. Let it cry out as it will, like a bat that would disturb the birds of day. Let us be firm in our plans, unchanging in our resolutions. Perseverance will show whether we are in earnest in offering ourselves to God and leading a devout life. Comets and planets are pretty nearly alike in their brightness, but the comets, which are but wandering lights, soon disappear, while the planets shine with perpetual brilliancy. So hypocrisy and true virtue have a considerable external resemblance, but they are easily distinguished, since hypocrisy does not endure, but soon is dispersed like the rising smoke, while true virtue abides firm and constant. There is no small advantage to the confirmation of our rising devotion in encountering opprobrium and calumny for by their means we are saved from the dangers of pride and vanity, which are like the midwives of Egypt, whom Pharaoh commanded to kill all the male Israelites as soon as they were born. We are crucified to the world, and the world should be crucified to us. It counts us as fools. Let us count its votaries as madmen. Chapter 2. That we must be of good courage. However much our eyes may admire and seek the light, they will be dazzled by it after having been long in darkness. And before we become in familiar with the inhabitants of a strange land, we shall find subjects of astonishment, however courteous and agreeable they may be. It is very probable that you will have sundry inward struggles in the course of your altered life, and that, having taken a thorough farewell of the follies and inanities of the world, you will have some sad and discouraging feelings. If so, only be patient. They will come to nothing. They are but the result of novelty, and once conquered, you will receive endless consolations. Perhaps at first you will be sorry to lose the glory which you earned in your vanity from the frivolous men of the world. But would you exchange, for that, the eternal glory which God will surely give you? Those idle pleasures and amusements in which your past years were spent will arise before you, tempting your heart to return to them. But have you courage to forfeit an eternity of bliss for such deceitful trifles? Believe me, with perseverance you will not fail to receive such deeply delicious and heartfelt satisfactions that you will own the world to offer only gall as compared with this honey, and that one day of devotion is worth more than a thousand years of worldly gratification. But, as you gaze upon the steep mountain of Christian perfection, Alas! you exclaim, how shall I ever ascend it? Be of good cheer. When the young bees begin to take their form, they are called nymphs, and are unable to fly to the neighboring flowers or hills and valleys in search of honey. But by degrees, being fed with the honey provided for them, these little nymphs acquire wings and grow strong enough to fly everywhere 
in quest of honey. We are, as yet, only nymphs in devotion, and cannot mount up as we would, for we would fain attain to the summit of Christian perfection. But we are gradually being formed by our desires and resolutions. Our wings are beginning to grow. And so one day we may hope to be perfected and mount upwards. Meanwhile, let us feed upon the honey of those pious instructions left to us by holy men of old, and let us beseech God that he will give us the wings of the dove, so that we may not only fly in this present life, but also find our rest in the eternity of that which is to come. End of chapter 2